Hello. Nice to see you out there. Um, from the sublime to the sausage making, it doesn't get much more sausagey than interlibrary loan. Um, I'm Dennis Massey, I'm a program officer, and like my colleagues Constance and, and Karen Smith Yoshimer, I'm based in uh, San Mateo uh, with the research office there. So for quite a few months, OCLC Research has been working with a small group of staff from OCLC Research Library Partnership Institutions to design and build an interlibrary loan cost calculator. Now why in the world would we want to do such a thing? Um, you hear a lot these days about um, evidence-based decision-making, but actually right now there's very little ev um, data available about the current costs of taking a piece of material from my library and lending it somewhere else, or borrowing such material from another library for, for a patron at, at my place. Um, and it's really hard to know if you're running a cost-effective operation if you have no idea what the costs are supposed to be for you or for anybody else. The Association of Research Libraries um, conducted a series of um, exercises, benchmarking exercises, and cost studies for interlibrary loan over a 10-year period starting in 1992. Um, the first one, they partnered with the Research Libraries Group, and they did several of these. Each time, the numbers were pretty similar, um, with the larger number representing what it costs to fill a borrowing request, and the smaller number what it costs to fill a lending request. And there's Mary Jackson. It's impossible to talk about this work without mentioning Mary of the uh, ARL, who was the driving force behind a lot of this work. And again, the numbers were pretty consistent. Um, but that 2002 study was really the last major study that was completed about interlibrary loan costs in the United States. And folks are still quoting those dusty old numbers when they talk about what it costs to share collections. So three years ago, a couple of academic librarians, Lars Leon from University of Kansas, and Nancy Kress, who at the time was at UNLV, but is now is at North Carolina State, conducted a small ILO cost study that was published as an article in the IFLA Document Supply Journal. And their numbers were interesting, very encouraging, too. They are starting to go down a little bit, as you might expect, with all the automation and so forth. But they had a very small sample of responses. The earlier um, studies were getting about three times as many responses. So, <coughs> pardon me. Aside from the age of uh, the earlier studies and the small sample for the most recent ones, this, the studies also differed in some, some pretty substantial ways, such as whether or not they looked at filled requests or not, or whether or not uh, they, uh, the, item, the requests were mediated by staff or not. And meanwhile, the research lands landscape has resource sharing landscape has just changed radically in the past 12 years or so. Now we um, might like to know not, not only how much it costs to supply a copy to another library, but how much it costs to supply it from a, a print resource or an electronic resource. Or what does it cost now to supply something from an off-site storage facility? In 2002, people really weren't worrying about that very much. Um, new models of resource sharing are also coming along, like uh, patron-driven acquisition. Uh, direct consortial borrowing and so forth. And technology has continued to evolve as technology usually does. So an intrepid band of ILL experts got together with uh, uh, OCLC research scientists to try to put this problem to bed. The idea for the calculator actually came from Margarita Moreno of the National Library, National Library of Australia. Originally we were just wondering does it cost us more to uh, supply a book to another library that they have to return, or a copy to uh, maybe just an article that they get to keep. We still don't know the answer to that. But we decided to build this thing to find the answer. And once it's finished, we'll know. And I'll, I'll tell you. I'll let you know. So we spent many months creating use cases and debating data elements and trying to figure out how the data was going to be organized and what we'd call it. We borrowed quite a few ideas from Lars's, uh, Lars Leon's um, uh, data intake tool for the 2011 study. He's been really generous with his time in, in advising us. We surveyed the international ILL community to kind of find out what's, what, what equipment's being used currently in ILL offices, and also to get a sense of what the, the folks in the community, what use they might want to make of, of uh, an ILL cost tool. And, and this is some of the stuff we found out. They really are anxious to get their hands on this data, and they want to know not only what is, what their current unit costs are, and so forth, 
but they want to know what could be. Make sure we can ask it some hypotheticals, was one of our uh, urged one respondent with big exclamation points. So we envision this tool actually becoming a real-time kind of virtual ILO cost study that just goes on and on. As the years go by, we'll encourage folks to come back uh, and update their data so that they can track important trends over time. And the tool will live on the web. It'll be freely available for everybody. Um, Getting access to current ILL data hopefully won't be a problem going forward. I included this really scary and inscrutable slide um, just to give you some idea of the complexity of designing this. It's not, it's not rocket surgery, as they say, but there still is a, a fair amount of data that we had to figure out how to capture and organize. So this is an internal document. This is the, what we, the designers, put together to kind of so we could hash out and, and have our debates about how things should be done. So down the left-hand side, those are all different kinds of expenses, like staff and systems and debits and equipment and so forth. And across the top, those are activities, like uh, lending from off-site storage or uh, sending somebody a, a returnable item. And percentages of each of the things on the left, each of the expenses, are going to have to be assigned to the activities on the right. So. Each one of those colors probably represents a set of worksheets and instructions and video tutorials we need to help uh, to, to create so people can, uh, this, we want to make this as easy as we can on the folks who will be entering the data. So, this is much less scary, right? This is, a, this is what it actually looks like. It's actually up on the web at the moment, but there's not, it, all the workings behind the scenes um, aren't there. It'll live on an experimental works page that's maintained by OCLC Research. And this is the front door, basically. Anyone will be able to come and get some high-level data about uh, the current average unit costs for supplying returnables and non-returnables, borrowing and lender. If you want any more data than that, more detailed reports, you'll need to enter data from your own institution. At that point, you'll be able to see your own unit costs, compare it with your peers, and ask the tool questions like, what are the average costs of uh, for institutions that have joined this consortium or are using this piece of equipment. This is an example of uh, what the data entry screens look like. Again, not very scary. This is for staff. Um, instructions and worksheets, as I said, will aid users as, as they um, go through the task of gathering the data and then sitting down to enter it. So we're trying to make it pretty clean and simple. So I've given a general overview of our aspirations and intentions in building this thing. If you want some more background or you want uh, more detail about what we're up to, um, visit our activity page on the OCLC research website. If you Google OCLC ILL cost calculator, it'll uh, be the top result in your result set. At least it was for me. So we're, we're still building this thing. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we hope to have it completed in the next couple of months. We've got the, the, the patron interface done. Now we're Working on the, the guts of the thing to be unappetizing for just a moment. Um, after some testing, probably in September, we'll put a call out for folks to come start entering their data. Because some of this, it's a lot of work to gather the data. Uh, most interlibrary loan offices probably have to report a lot of this anyway, so they'll have some of it. But some, it, it's a lot of work to put it all together. And some of it's sensitive because there's salary information. So what we hope to do is leverage our um, our, our relationships with library directors uh, in the OCLC Research Library Partnership and in other associations and consortia to, to buy into the thing. And so hopefully by the time we call for data, um, there will be a lot of directors and so forth that are convinced that this is worth doing. They'll have top-down buy-in, so we'll have maximum input and we'll give the thing maximum value. Um, I plan to report out to the community as we keep going along, uh, definitely at midwinter, and again next, next year at annual, I'll have something to say about this. Um, we'll keep tweaking the design and functionality, and a year later, we'll ask folks to come back and update their data so uh, they can track things from year to year. It'll become like an annual write, so that, to paraphrase Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind, as God is my witness, we'll never be hungry for ILO cost data again. Thanks.